Hello everyone. Welcome to Literary Animator, a place where you study, we animate. Before we start, I want to inform you all that this video is explained in English. If you guys need Hindi explanation, please let me know. I will create a video in Hindi as soon as possible. Feel free to comment if you like my lectures to boost my confidence. An anonymous first-person narrator makes a comment in the opening lines of the quilt about how, in the winter, when she covers herself in a quilt, the shadows it casts on the wall seem to sway like an elephant. The scene brings up a horrific recollection of the narrator as a little child when her mother abandoned her for a week and left her in the care of Begum Jan, the mother's adoptive sister. The mother of the narrator left him because she was constantly fighting with boys. The narrator describes Begum Jan's arranged marriage to Nawab Sahib, a Muslim nobleman who is seen as a pride by the general public because dancers and prostitutes are never seen entering his home. The Nawab does, however, allow young male students to reside with him while he covers their living expenses. The Nawab ignores his wife's sexual demands and confines her to a particular area of the house due to his supposed homosexuality. Begum Jan makes unsuccessful attempts to entice him, but soon discovers that her life energy is dwindling. Rabbu, her hired master, revives Begum Jan. Begum Jan gets frequent massages from Rabbu. She sleeps next to her and is always by her side. No doctor has ever been able to treat Begum Jan's chronic itch. Only Rabbu has the ability to satisfy the urge for sexual release or the rich. Begum Jan is unaware of the rumours spread by the domestic servants about her reliance on Rabbu because she lives for her itch. As a young child, the narrator stays with Begum Jan, whom she adores and considers to be extremely attractive. The storyteller is a favourite of Begum Jan as well. Begum Jan Rabbu and the narrator all snooze in the same chamber. Rabbu is ugly in her eyes. When Begum Jan's quilt trembles, the narrator awakens. The quilt seems to hide an elephant struggling in the shadows. When Begum Jan's name is mentioned, the quilt stops trembling and deflates. The narrator is advised by Begum Jan to get some rest. The narrator declares that she is terrified and that she believes a robber has entered the house after hearing a second voice. The second voice, Rabbu, responds that there isn't a thief. The narrator had forgotten what transpired during the previous night before morning. She overhears a quiet argument between Brigham Jan and Rabbu the following evening. The narrator hears Rabbu crying before hearing a cat licking a plate. The following day, Rabbu departs to see her son, who had previously resided with the Nawab but fled after an unspecified incident. Begum Jan is devastated now that Rabbu is gone. She refuses to eat and cries non-stop. The narrator offers to give her aunt a massage at night. Begum Jan consents and takes the massage while dozing off. The following day, Rabbu is still absent. Begum Jan becomes agitated as her head hurts. Begum Jan responds to the narrator's continued massaging of her with sensual breaths. The narrator hardly pays attention as Begum Jan points her hand in the direction of her itchy skin while they converse about purchasing items from the market. When the narrator becomes aware of the private area she is touching, she jerks her hand away. As she makes the narrator sleep close to her, Begum Jan chuckles. Despite the narrator's objections and efforts to escape, she starts caressing her inappropriately and counting her ribs. Begum Jan's eyes get more intense and a smell emanates from her body. 
The narrator experiences an odd terror. She feels pressure from Begum John as though she were an item. Begum John eventually reclines while exhaling loudly. When Rabbu comes back that night, the narrator thanks him for leaving the room. The narrator remains at Begum John's residence. She spends time with the servants in an effort to get away from Begum John and the anonymous horror she perceives around her. While Begum John washes herself, she forces the narrator to sit next to her so that he or she cannot see Begum John's body. Begum John tries to entice the reclusive narrator by offering her a gold necklace and market fresh delicacies, but the narrator is certain that she simply wants to return home. Begum John snaps as Rabbu subtly chastises her for being so demanding with the narrator. Begum John has calmed down since that evening. The narrator notices Begum John's quilt shifting and trembling once more in the bedroom. She turns on the lamp. Begum John and Rabbu, who are hiding underneath the quilt, leap forth. The quilt's corner is briefly seen by the narrator. She gasps in shock and exclaims, Good God! She then lays back in her bed even further. Thank you, everyone. I hope you all liked my explanation. See you in next video.